Hey everyone, uh, before we start tonight's episode, uh, which was recorded last week before the week 17 of the NFL season and the tragic event that happened on Monday Night Football, just wanted to send our thoughts and our hearts out to the Hamlin family. Uh, as of right now, DeMar is still in critical condition and all we can do is sit around anxiously hoping for a positive outcome. I uh, just want to take this opportunity to say, you know, you never know what can happen in life and don't take things for granted. Reach out to your friends and your family and your loved ones and, and tell them you love them, you know. Uh, tell them how much they mean to you. Try to enjoy the moments that you have because uh, you never know what can happen. Uh, it seems trivial to put out Dynasty content at this time. Uh, football doesn't seem that important, uh, but we already had this show recorded and just wanted to do a little intro to uh, address kind of how we're all feeling and uh, again, wish wishing the best and our hearts go out to the Hamlin family. Um, let's go ahead and get to this show. Let's take it back to the 22 class here and let's, you know, we'll play a little worth of first here for the rest of this episode. And like um, let's let's we'll, we'll, we'll work in the 22 class. And then if we have some more time, we'll go beyond that. Um, so the 22 class was, you know, obviously, you know, the, Kenny Walker and and um, drawing a blank right now, bright Brees. Um, we can kind of leave them out of this conversation, I think. Um, mm-hmm. And let's go. Let's start with the wide receivers. Burks. Drake, Wilson, Olave. I think every, we're all pretty comfortable with those being the, the top guys in this class right now. And, and you would pretty much trade a first for those guys. As long as it, so, and this comes down to the way we view the quarterbacks and just the quarterback landscape in general, mm-hmm. like the quarterback position, it, it, it's atrocious right now. Like in case they might throw you out there next week. Yeah. <laughs> the, way, the way this is going, it's and I feel bad for a lot of people in week 17 championship games where the trade deadline is passed and it's like, good luck. You're throwing right. out. I, I, I saw the list that you got. The, you know, the list off the top of your head. What was your tweet? Oh my God. No. But then people were like, Oh, well you left uh, Tyler Huntley off. I'm like, well, I, you know, I, there's so many names. Uh, no, I, Honestly, I have the landscape of starting quarterbacks this this week is uh, awful. So, um, you know, you got Stidham starting Mike White, uh, Colt McCoy, uh, Teddy Bridgewater. I said we live in a world where Colt McCoy, Desmond Ritter, Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield, Andy Dalton. uh, People took exception to me, including Brock Purdy. They didn't like that. I included. How dare you? Uh, Davis Mills, Nick Foles, Jarrett Sitta, Mike White, Malik Willis, and likely Teddy Bridgewater are all starting in week 17. What a time to be alive. Yeah, it's it's disgusting. But anyway, so based on, you know, I, I still do like Shroud and Young. I I would move any pick outside of the top four for any of those wide receivers. Now, I'm not saying I clearly have... 102, three, and four valued over Alave or Wilson, but with the scarcity of the position, and I, I believe that the wide receiver is going to be a little bit easier to replace, despite those two guys checking so many boxes their rookie year. Um, I, I would want a shot at, at Gibbs or one of the two quarterbacks there. And then Bijan just above sure. all of them. Sure, sure, sure. And Burks is in there with those guys still with with the with those five that I mentioned. You're you're okay with it, or are you still you leaving him maybe out of that conversation? He comes down one tier as of right now. I, I would, and it's so tricky putting names to picks right now because we talked about sure. it. What if somebody slips? But right. just to give an idea to our patrons and listeners in general, uh, I like to assign players these picks to give a a better idea. I would take JSN. And Jordan Addison over Traylon Burks today because of j- just style of uh, play or this land or h- how the Tennessee Titans are being run right now or what you've seen from Burks. It's a combination of well, see, I love Burks. I, I you know, I, I think the opportunity he's had, uh, he's he's done enough to certainly still be right in the mix for me. I, I just. It's a combination of what happens next year at the quarterback position. I pray to God it's not Malik Willis because we're going to see seven pass attempts per game. People wanted to complain about the Atlanta Falcons and what 
the quarterback situation that the volume was doing to those receivers, it's going to be worse with Malik Willis in Tennessee. So I hope it's not him. But also well, the, the GM just got fired from, you know, maybe I don't know who who, who uh-huh. was to blame for AJ Brown. And, you know, it, it would it would uh, we would assume that either Tannehill is going to be the starter next year or somebody besides Malik Willis, because he clearly needs. Uh, you know, I'm fine with him hanging out for a little while. And I was fine with you taking a stab with him in, in the middle of second round last year, just because he's a quarterback and he can move around. But I mean, we have seen nothing to get you excited. And and if he is the quarterback, then it's certainly a huge downfall from Burks. But I, you know, I liked what we were seeing from Burks later mm-hmm. in the season here. Um, kind of that that's what you wanted to see. Um, and there isn't a whole lot of people to take away the volume. The volume just seems to be turned up, you know, just a little bit. Um uh, I feel you. I mean, I, I'd be fine with 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 saying JSN and Addison. I don't, I don't have a, a strong feeling over one of those guys or the other. So lumping them together and saying, yeah, I'm fine. So, but but uh, Johnston uh, over Burks. I have them the same tier right now. Okay. And and that's a situation where if 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 Quentin gets he's going to go in the first round. If he mm-hmm. gets the right landing spot, like there just is not that the pie is not very large, even with Ryan Tannehill at quarterback in Tennessee, uh, as long as Derrick Henry's alive and kicking and who knows that that dude might play till he's 40. Cause he's an yeah. absolute freak. But uh, that's one where I have them in the same tier. If I'm pivoting one way or the other, I need a plus. So that cutoff line for me is Traylon Burks at one Oh seven, one Oh eight. Uh, because I have Sean Tucker cross positionally tiered there as well. I would buy Burks for 109 or later, sell him for 106, and then I'd need a plus one way or the other that 107, 108. I like it. He's, he's, I, I can't, I, I don't think I can make that distinction right now, but I like, I, I'm, I feel you on, on that for the most part. Uh, ask me, ask me again next week though, and it could sure. all be flipped. A hundred percent. We're having fun right now. Uh, we're, we're just scratching the surface on, on all these things. You still need some more data. I yeah. need to watch some all 22s. Uh, and, and, and again, I want to, you know, I don't, I'm not going to do the work to, to get the data, but I want to know the data and I want to know the thresholds because I, I'll, I you know, I I'll, do I'll think it's very data. important. It's, you know, I, I want to know it all. I, you know, I want to put all those things together. Um, and then, you know, when you're, uh, I think when you're on the level of Kenny Walker, I'm okay with forgiving some of the, the non pass catching things is really the only point that I always try to right. make on these right. things. Um, but all right, let's, let's move to kind of the next group of wide receivers here and no particular order. Um, Let's let's say uh, we've talked about Jahan Dotson before on here. Actually, let's start with Jamison Williams since we haven't really seen much of him. He, he could easily be in that other tier. Um, if he wouldn't have gotten hurt, maybe he was the he's the best of that tier. Lions don't seem as scary as they once were. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, so how does that how does he factor in for you? For me, nothing has changed for him. What we've seen these last two weeks and his usage, I'm not reading into it. I think they're really going to ease him into it. This is a long play with Jamison Williams. For me, I, I, I it would be the same exact conversation we just had with Traylon Burks. I have them tiered together. So anything up 106 and above, I'm taking the pick. 109 and later, I'm taking Jamison Williams. Love it. Love it. That's a, that's a, that's a good answer. I'm, I'm again, probably right there with you. Haven't seen enough of Jamison Williams. We kind of know what it is. I'm okay with them slow playing it and what can happen next year. You know, I think he's better than, and the production that they're getting out of Chark right now is, is very solid uh, mm-hmm. most weeks. So I, you know, I think, I think there's something there and I'm, I'm, you know, even if golf is the guy there for another year or three, it doesn't make me as scared that offensive line is really good. Golf has a a clean pocket to work in a lot of the times. Um, and he kind of fits with what's going on there. So, so I agree there. Um, how about, how about, uh, some other fringe kind of first rounders from last year that have, uh, depending on who you are, George Pickens, um, you know, not the production isn't there, but the wow plays are certainly there. Um, you know, still the volume going to Deontay, but maybe not quite making what he once was making of it. I think there might might actually be a little value in Deontay right now because his value seems down, um, but the volume's still kind of there. Pick thoughts on Pickens and and what you would do with him comparing into this twenty three here. Same thing. I, I would like you're hitting all the same tier. You know, pick for one reason or another from what we've seen versus expectations. Pickens is that guy that 
the, the talent, there's no arguing the talent at this point. If there were any doubts, you can put those aside. Um, stuff them in a sorry sack, pal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stuff the sorry's in a sack. Um, yeah. Uh, but I, I actually think, has this season been great for the Steelers or Kenny Pickett? No. But I do think we've seen some good things from Pickett. And – Agreed. I, I'm hoping there's some advancement there and improvement in that offense overall. We we start to see it click a little bit more at the at the start of next season. But like you said about Deontay, I think he's somebody that that is a nice value to go out and acquire today. I think George Pickens, depending on the manager that has him, I've found for the most part, if somebody has George Pickens, they love George Pickens. Right. They probably drafted him to have him because they liked him and you're not getting him off of him. But it does seem like there is a sort of house divided on Pickett, whereas mm-hmm. they don't. Some people are like, he's trash. And I'm like, man, I, I watched a fair amount. You're in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. He's There's been enough streaks of some really good football where it's like, oh, this is this. This looks like this looks right now. Can can he grow expound on that? And can is Canada the guy? I'm not sure. Um, but uh, it sounds like know, Canada is it regardless of how this plays out this season. It it sounds like he might be out. Yeah, w- which would be fair enough. I mean, yeah. I, I think Pickett and Canada have some familiarity with one another, but um, it just doesn't seem to be quite working. We need an offensive line. We need we need an offensive line. Mm-hmm. Um, not not that I like the Steelers or anything, but right. Th- right. You know, Pittsburgh needs one. So pick it. Pickett or Pickens is hanging out right in there. How about, how about, um, let's go Jahan Dotson. He's hot in them streets right now. Um, you know, he, I know he can't be in that tier. I know you're, uh, a regression, uh, kind of guy. You like to, you know, dwell on, on making great things sad, but, um, Jahan <laughs> Dotson thoughts, uh, on, on worth a first. Yeah, in the holiday season, you might say I'm the Grinch at times when it comes to <laughs> comes to this stuff. But Jahan Dotson, so Carson Wentz is his uh, like their best buds. I don't know, maybe they have breakfast together or something. But with Carson Wentz back in now, that is who Dotson really flourished with. No, I will not move a 23 first for Jahan Dotson. All right. You know, I'm, I'm, he was, he was in the first for me last year, which I think was not in the first for, for some people last year, uh, ahead of Christian Watson for me. Um, and you know, the situation makes me pause on saying to give a first, the talent he clearly, you know, I I hate to boil it down to this, but he clearly can play in this league. Um, and that, you know, so I think to you know i I would it would want to be to the championship or the runner-up because i just don't know that you need to give up that value to get Jahan dotson necessarily um but he is has been good so i'd say a fringe first uh but i I really like him and i'm saying no because uh, you know i I don't think you have to um but i'll give you a a super late one if if i don't like how especially non-super flex we're talking super flex here then it, it 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 Definitely doesn't feel quite as good. I'd like a shot at a running back, and I'm mostly just – I'm always going to give the nod to the running back in the fantasy mm-hmm. draft if I feel like they're close to the same tier as the receiver uh, just because it is the cheapest, easiest way to replenish the stock of the running backs. You know, when the running backs are – like, as soon as Kenny Walker started hitting, good luck. You're not getting him. He's – you know, the, k- kiss it goodbye. There's no more one first that's getting him, and, and that, you know, there's – Sometimes it's not even two firsts that are going to get him once he starts rolling and is putting points in the lineup. So, um, yeah, I, I would I would tend to agree with you that in super he probably shouldn't. He probably doesn't cost it, but I want to say he is. I, I think the talent's there. Uh, now, but, if you're in a one quarterback league, yeah, I'll fire a late first agreed. because here's what I think is going to happen. We have the two quarterbacks that we talked about, Stroud and Young, but then we have Will Levis and Anthony Richardson who. I, I believe both get that first round draft capital in the NFL. And because of that, you're in a super flex league. You know, the first round quarterbacks, they get inflated. Whether sure. or not we believe in the talent, they get inflated. And because of that, you have the four first round quarterbacks, because I, I don't think Hooker finds himself landing at the back of the no. first. Uh, Which could be the best have, thing for him. Right. So you have those four quarterbacks, Bijan, Gibbs, Tucker, Tank, and then you have... Addison, JSN, Quentin Johnston. So if you're telling me now, 
because those two quarterbacks and Levis and Richardson, they got bumped up a little bit. I think the NFL is going to love Zach Evans. I think a team's going to going to look at him and with his size and skill set, I think he's going to get the draft capital necessary. So if you're deciding between Zach Evans in a favorable situation with the draft capital versus Jahan Dotson, who I already talked about the replaceable wide receiver position, I still want that 112. So I, I'm with you. If we're deciding between a running back and Dotson, or you know, even if Miller, you know, g- gets a slips in there with with good draft capital yeah. landing spot, that that's gonna, you know, I'm gonna be whistling a different tune in terms of where I have him. He'll be bumped up, but yeah. I mean, this isn't a knock on Dotson. No, I I, 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 I tried to slip him in there and talk through it. I, I think, yeah, I, I, I guess I, I mostly agree. Um, how about, all right, last one for the receivers, Christian Watson. Um, how's he? How's he play out for you here? Worth the first for me? If Dotson's not worth the first, I don't think Watson's worth the first. But the situation's a little better for Watson, especially if Arod comes back. I don't know that you can leave fifty thousand or fifty million on the table or whatever it is for. And I, I, we've been talking about this a little bit. I do think now that that Aaron Rodgers has kind of gotten something out of Watson and and. Romeo can obviously play and and if those guys can find a rhythm which you know they have and have and have not throughout the season I think all of a sudden you add one more guy to this core and maybe you bring back Lazard or whatever because he's in the tree of trust but all of a sudden he comes back with a unit that he feels it's just night and day uh so it might might be you know you know behoove him and he might be more you know ready to come back and say hey I, you know we're, we're good now like i you know i don't have to worry about the dumb shit that we were upset about mm-hmm. you know having to figure out how to get in the playoffs here with those guys so um thoughts on watson worth the first i would move that same 112 that i said i wouldn't move for dots and i would move it for watson and i was not a big fan of watson really uh there were a lot of things about his profile that that i didn't like from an uh, analytical perspective, but he's in that offense. He's too explosive. I think that yeah. ceiling is way too high. Uh, you know, we, uh, that touchdown rate, it's going to come down and it certainly has the last two weeks, but like you said, he's starting to develop that rapport and that trust with Aaron Rodgers, even with a few drops here and there, he's sure. still getting looks. Whereas early in the season, he dropped a pass and I, he wasn't looked at the rest of the game. So yeah. I think that did change a little bit. Uh, yeah, that, that ceiling's way too high. And at that point, with what we've seen from him, I I would have to take Watson. Yeah. Over the, the 112. Now, we get into that 109, 110 range. Again, if I'm choosing between my guy Tank and Christian Watson, I'm getting the Tank. You know, <laughs> getting the getting the Bigs V. All right, get get in the tank. We're all aboard. Um, yeah. So that that one twelve, like that's that sweet spot right there for Watson. But yeah, I would acquire at that price. All right, let's jump over to the running backs real quick. We'll run through these fast. I you know I know there's not much sexy going on there, but I got to ask about Damian Pierce. Much to do. Not worth the first coming into this season for you. Ha- anything changed that he's worth the first now? I have him tiered with uh, Jahan Dotson, actually. Okay. So the, the same price point that we just talked about. I have Rashad White, James Cook, and Damian Pierce. So again, this isn't... Uh, James I Cook's have, the next question on here, so we can throw him right in this conversation. Those guys I, I view fairly similarly. Uh, James Cook, we don't really know what that situation is going to look like in 23. They they have Naheem Hines under contract. Is he more involved? Where does Singletary play? He's a free agent here after the season. Uh, so that that's but the work that James Cook has gotten, it, yeah. it's it's looked good. But again, this comes down to those running backs that you very well might be able to get at 107, 108, 109. I prefer all of them straight up to the the Rashad Whites, the James Cooks, the Damian Pierces. So, uh, but I do think there is less of a chance because of what we've seen throughout the season that Damian Pierce, not just is replaced, but I think he's at least on the right side of the 50-50 split. I don't think somebody's going to come in and necessarily take the work completely from him uh, or even, you know, a majority of the work. But 
that that team is still going to worry me a little bit, even yeah. if they I, I they're going to be in prime position. I I hope they go Bryce Young because I actually prefer Stroud a little bit, and I don't want Stroud to be in that situation. <laughs> and yes, yeah. I, I don't want it. Yeah, well, that, that that situation could could we we talked about it on the last pod or two, like how how quickly that situation can flip if if the quarterback they get can can play and can fit in. Absolutely. And they, I mean, I don't I don't think Lovey's the coach there the next year. I think he was a you know a, a position holder. Now, who is it going to be? Is it going to be D'Amico Ryan's? Is going to be a little more defensive, or will it be? Will they go over to like the Eagles and 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 pick up Shane, mm-hmm. or you know wh- where the you know it seems like they should go offensive, but they're the Texans and and maybe D'Amico Ryan's having a history there. Maybe he he wants to go. I'm not really sure why you would want to go from the Niners to the Texans, but you know ego is a, a wild thing. Um, but uh, you know, Here, so- let, let me ask if if you're if you're D'Amico and you're sitting there with the 49ers and you got you personally got offered the head coaching job of the Houston Texans. Would you pass up a head coaching job? You've been, you've been working your whole life for this. You know, I don't, well, his situation is a little different because he was at least was a player and, and has a little bit different, you know, kind of a maybe view on it a little bit, but I don't think you can. I mean, you, but how many chances are you going to get to right. be the head coach? And then how much longer, if it's not right, will, will it take you to get back there? Um, and is, you know, will you be willing to work to get back there or do you just say, Hey, I'm a DC, this is fine. And then the Niner situation, I, I would say that you probably do, especially cause maybe, maybe the Texans mean a little, so I, I'm, he played in Texas. He played was a Texan for a while. Right. Domingo Ryan. Hey, you talk about defense. I'm like, I, defense. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. But yeah, I mean, and then you look at a guy like uh, Brian Dable who, uh, everybody thought, Two years ago, oh, the, this offseason, he's got, coming out. Look at what he did with Josh Allen, blah, blah, blah. And he stayed put for one more year. Yeah. And then the Giants open up, and th- that obviously Boom. has worked out swimmingly for him. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, so that's a, that's a tough call. But it, I think – I hope they go offensive – um, but you know, D'Amico seems like he would he would have a nice culture there, um, and and you know, uh, the Jets. You just you, after after one year of of uh, you know the former DC of the 49ers going over there, you know they got their defense in place, and and you know if they could just get any quarterback play at all, they're they're a playoff team. Uh, so. Uh, you know, I don't know if there's quite the pieces there that, that were that are quite as good that were in New York to, to rapidly build that defense as, right. as fast, but there is some okay pieces um, in in Houston. So, 